there is an amazing metal alloy that you see every single day, probably every hour actually, uh, and it doesn't get enough credit. It makes up the world around you. You could probably see some from where you're sitting right now, you know, if you know what to look for. Look around. It's Zamic. It's, it's zinc. It's a zinc alloy. Got a metal towel rack? Probably Zamic. Silver colored door handles? Zamic. Die cast toy cars? Zamic. Sink faucets? Sinks themselves sometimes. Metal belt buckles? Got one of them KitchenAid mixers? Well that, that, that painted metal shell? That's cast in Zamic. The stuff is everywhere, including right here. It is a fantastic alloy. It melts colder than aluminum, a little higher than, than lead and tin. It flows into details really well. It's reasonably tough. It shines up really pretty and it is cheap. So why don't more people use this stuff? I mean, other than being like suspiciously cheap. Well, it's not lightweight like aluminum, but it's not as tough as like steel or iron. Uh, you can shine it up nice and pretty, but it's still not as cool looking as like brass or bronze. The low temperature is nice, but like pewter is even lower temperature yet. So it's, it's, it's a great all rounder. It's a great casting alloy, but it's not like fantastic at any one thing. And then there's the zinc rot, like zinc pest it's sometimes called. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. So I have a pile of Zamic over here and it happens to be Zamic 12, Z-A-12. The alloys are numbered like two, three, five, seven, whatever. Uh, we're not gonna go into the details. Supposedly number 12, is the good stuff for gravity-fed sand casting, which is what I do. And I am about to embark on a huge project that I've started and failed before, uh, and it starts with a gigantic casting. And I've never used Zamic 12 before, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little experiment today. I've got some stuff here in plastic that I'd really, that I'd really like in metal, uh, and we're gonna cast it and try to extract a whole bunch of information out of the castings, try to see, you know, kind of how zinc works. And uh, maybe, you know, you can get off on the right foot if you ever try to use this stuff, hmm? Though to be honest, I'm doing this voiceover thing after I've already done all the experiments, because when I was doing them, my voice sounded like an elderly chain smoker. Thank you, allergies. Uh, I hope I sound a little more living today, uh, because I feel horrible. First off, I have a 150 badge. This is off of a 1987 40 Econoline. Now most car badges, like even in the 80s, were injection molded in plastic, uh, which means I can probably, this is a two-part mold, I can probably just use this in the sand. I've done it before. And then I'll be able to, you know, shine it up, see what the zinc looks like. This, this badge has some tiny details that failed to cast when I tried it in aluminum bronze. Maybe it'll work in zinc, we'll see. Next up, this weird looking print. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be a screwdriver handle that I printed in Fusion 360. So the reason this thing is sticking out here, Think of it like a core. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the pattern out and stick in one of them little quick change bits. Importantly though, you'll see this part is a big chunk of metal. Now that's almost guaranteed to get some shrinkage. When you have a really thick chunky part next to some thinner bits, the thick chunky part freezes last and tends to get all the shrinkage. There's a way to prevent that called adding something called a feeder. Probably I would have added a feeder on this end. I'm not gonna do that because I wanna see how bad it's gonna shrink. This is an experiment, remember? For science, I'm gonna ruin this casting. We'll see what happens. Finally, this old spear print. This is a 3D print of a, a 3D scanned Bronze Age artifact. You can get this, the print on my mini factory, it's free. And I've made this before uh, a few times. Uh, and it's got some cool details. There's some cast, there's some like lines that were probably cast into the original, pr into the original spear. Some nice surface texture all bumpy. I wanna see if any of that comes through in, in the zinc. Plus you can see there's kind of a thick chunky bit here. Maybe I'll get shrinkage, who knows. Uh, I kind of want to see what it looks like. As I'm wrapping this up, I decided to try using a carpenter's pencil for the gate. I've never tried that before, but it seems like the right shape for a gate, so why not? Why not give it a shot? Since we're experimenting anyway, on that note, do not try to replicate my gating here. I usually try to use like a pouring basin and a spin trap and all this stuff to prevent like flaws in the castings. I'm doing none of that here. I want to give it every chance of failure so I can kind of like see how it's going to work. Maybe I can head off some problems in the future. Hence, you know, the guaranteed screwdriver shrinkage. The 150 badge didn't pull out of the sand very well. That's, that's my fault. Uh, it's going back in the melt pile anyway, so I'm not real concerned. So I got these ingots at Roto Metals, and you can see they're kind of long. So I actually had to cut one in half to fit it in the crucible so it wasn't like sticking out over the edge. And about buying this stuff, uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to scavenge zinc stuff. It's, it's like everywhere, yeah, but there's different kinds. And if you mix it all together, the alloy will probably work for casting. But remember that zinc pest I mentioned earlier? Google it. Old die cast toys like suffer from this really bad. It's caused by lead impurity, like super small amounts of lead impurities. Give it time and it will wreck the casting. Just completely destroy it and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Some people say 
Newer things, like from the last few decades, don't have enough lead in them. They've been really careful to try to prevent this. Uh, but supposedly, those newer, like post-1982, like copper-plated zinc pennies, some of them do this after a while. So, uh, are you going to risk it? I'm not. Stuff's pretty cheap. Just buy a good ingot. You also don't want to risk contaminating it in your shop, and I don't think I've melted any, any lead or any lead-containing metal ever. Be more careful about getting lead in your zinc than you are about getting lead in your body. It's that bad. Obviously don't eat lead, although it is delicious. Don't do it. It's not worth the sweetness. I think like ancient Romans used to use lead as like a sweetener. Like how stupid is that? Like they even knew it was bad for you. They weren't idiots. They knew it was bad. Anyways, moving on. It's super easy to melt. Melt it super easy despite my, my furnace being completely destroyed for reasons that you will see in a future video. Stupidity. Stupidity is the reason. With zinc anything, actually, keep the temperature really low. If you see like white smoke, like wispy smoke coming out the top of the thing, don't breathe it. It will give you metal fume fever, the, the zinc shakes. To get that smoke coming off, you have to have this stuff like way overheated, like super overheated. So if you see smoke, don't breathe it and turn down the heat. You get the same smoke, by the way, if you melt brass. Don't breathe that either. Be careful with brass. So this stuff pours super well. It's way more fluid, way more runny than aluminum for sure. And I don't even know if I had it up to pouring temperature. It had barely melted at this point. So uh, keep your flask like tight together or it might leak between. You'll get a lot more flashing with this. And you know like Petrobon sand, this red sand, it like bursts into flames anytime I pour bronze into it. It didn't even smoke, like barely smoked. Like this low temperature stuff is like magic. It's great. I bet you I'll never accidentally melt the plinth block working on this stuff, dumping a crucible full of junk all over the furnace like an idiot. Now I was told specifically by Chirpy to let zinc castings sit in the sand for a little longer than usual. Otherwise they might warp when you pull them out. And despite trying to ruin all this, uh, the castings look pretty good. Pretty happy with that. If you need to cut this stuff up, uh, be aware, it really gums up like the grinding discs and the flap discs. Not as bad as aluminum, but uh, still pretty bad. And there's no sparks, so that's cool too. All right, here's the car badge. I tried hitting this with a flap disc to try to shine it up. It shined up pretty good. It actually got all this, all the edge around here, except for the tiny bit there. It kind of filled in the middle, but that's because I didn't pull the thing out of the sand very well. Um, it's going to the melt pile anyway, but that's pretty cool, I think. And here's the screwdriver with the bit in the end. Uh, I tried to, you know, just hit the high spots with the, the angle grinder to give it a little bit of a shine. And the shrinkage is most noticeable right here. See, there's kind of a dish in that, that top. Yeah, that's supposed to be flat, kind of like this side. All in all, it's actually not that bad. As a side note, I must have overheated the uh, magnet in there because this thing lost all magnetism. It's possible this was a, a sucky bit anyway. That's why it wasn't in my toolbox. And lastly, the spear point. So I, I have two sides of this. This side I hit with just a 120 grit flap disc, try to shine it up. I didn't want to grind away all the details like these ridges that, that came through, uh, but it definitely is kind of shiny. Shiny enough to screw with my camera, that's for sure. But this is the as cast texture, and I'm sure you can see a couple of key things. First off, these edges are showing through. These ridges, those are in the pattern, and it did preserve all of that detail. And secondly, see how rough that surface is? It's rough because this metal is so flowy that it actually conforms to the shape of the sand grains a little better. So we're in store for some really highly detailed castings, I believe, at least possibly with, with this zinc alloy. Or highly shiny ones. Which one do you like better? The, the sandy or the shiny? Do you not like sand? And one last thing, remember this pencil? Well, Craftsman and Ace are stamped in it. If you take a look here, you can almost see the word Ace in the casting. You can't really read Craftsman, although you can see where it goes, but you can almost read Ace. How cool is that? So there you go. You now know what to expect if you try to cast Zamic at home. Uh, if you're new to like metal casting and you're having trouble with aluminum, maybe give Zamic a try before you throw in the towel. It could solve all your problems. I will leave some links down below where I got this stuff and uh, I will see you next week. Bye.